ancient concept about 3,000 years, so not new at all. So many modifications of the definition have been made for psychotherapeutic purposes. And as I said, one aspect of mindfulness is remembering. Remember to pay attention, but it is more than being passively attentive. It's an active attention that you develop. And the essential purpose of mindfulness is to eliminate unnecessary suffering by cultivating insight into the nature of the mind and how it operates in the world. And John Kabat-Zinn, and John Kabat-Zinn is known as the father of mindfulness in, in our Occidental society, defines mindfulness as the awareness that arises from paying attention in the present moment, intentionally and non-judgmentally. So, although it is an ancient concept, it is always fresh and new, and we speak so much about mindfulness nowadays because our society really needs something to help to make a pause uh, and to create a space of awareness of our internal and external reality. And mindfulness helps us to live fully and to connect to the being mode instead of a doing mode that is so common. And we learn to do things, but no one teaches us to be. And, uh, and we need to be uh, all the time. And sometimes we don't know how to be. And when we practice mindfulness, that doesn't mean that we will become enlightened individuals living under a tree. No, we won't become good, I'm sorry because we'll continue to do things, to react, to feel stress, anxiety, depression, but the main difference is that we will be aware of these uh, emotions, uh, thoughts, body sensations, and when we truly know, when we truly inhabit our bodies, we become free to choose. And it shifts us from an automatic pilot to a responsive attitude. And I usually say to the MDSR participants that if we think about a goal, and mindfulness has no goals, but if we think about one, it will be to generate a space, a space inside of you. And with this space, this space of awareness, I could really see and sense the event and change my reaction to a response. And when we practice mindfulness, and mindfulness is all about practice, um, this practice to pay attention in the particular way with the purpose of being here and now, we develop this innate ability and we all were born with the capacity of paying attention. T teachers yell at us to pay attention, but of course that's not a great way to teach how to pay attention. So attention allows us to stop, to see actually what is happening, and this awareness allows us to uh, respond instead of react, as I said. And the more I practice, the more awareness I will have in every moment, in every situation, in my communication with others. So eventually, I will become aware of my awareness, a concept that we call metacognition. And when we practice mindfulness, we develop this mind, but also this heart attitude. And all mindfulness practices are based in nine fundamentals or attitudes, and they all coexist and are doors to each other. So in no particular order, we have non-judging. And non-judging means to take in the stance of an impersonal witness and witness the stream of our mind, good, bad, right or wrong, our mind is always, is always doing this. So we, we won't stop to judge things, but we will be aware of, of, of this judgment. 
For this, we need patience, of course, and patience means to let things unfold at the wrong time. Imagine a child that wants to help the butterfly coming out from the cocoon. The chances is that the butterfly won't benefit of it and it will die, so things unfold at the wrong time. Beginner's mind, uh, we can think that too often we let our thinking and uh, our beliefs to, to stop us from really see things as they re really are at the moment. We are always trying to change the situation and we, we live our experience based in our previous experience. So, uh, we are not truly really here. Trust. We need to develop this basic trust in our bodies, in our sensations, in our feelings, in our instinct. And these also help us to honor uh, our existence. Non-striving, and as I said, meditation has no other goal than for us to be ourselves, and the irony is that we already are. So, we are always trying to push situations and make them look like what we want them to be. So, this demands an enormous amount of energy, of course. Acceptance. Acceptance just means seeing things as they actually are in the present. It's not a passive attitude, it's uh, an active one. It's just a moment when I deal with the situation and accept my reality. And I don't force it to be something else. So, letting go we know that for us, if we want to inhale, we need first to exhale. So, we need to create space, and that's life. We always need to create space. That word means letting go. Letting go is letting be. The last two ones, gr gratitude and generosity, we can say that are attitudes of the heart. Gen uh, generosity uh, and, and gratitude are uh, two fundamentals that are added some years before the seven first. And the generosity is the attitude of giving oneself over to life and giving to others what would make them happy for the sake of the joy it, 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 it brings them. And the gratitude is the attitude of being grateful to a appreciate even the simplest things in life and we are often disconnected of this attitude. We want more and more and more and we are never satisfied. So, I want to, and just before I finish this presentation, I want to clarify you some important things about mindfulness in the case you don't know. Mindfulness is not obscure or esoteric, it's not a special added thing that you do or add to your time. You don't need to change to practice it, you don't need to become a monk or a Buddhist. It has the potential to be a, tr a transformative social phenomenon and anyone can do it. We, we were born with this capacity. It is a way of living, it's not it's not just a, a, a skill or, or a tool, it's a way of being in your life. It's evidence-based and it sparks innovation. So, my take-home message is just this. It is indeed a radical act of love just to sit down and be quiet for a time by yourself. And we all need it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your lecture, Dr. João Castrio. Now let's open the floor for some, some questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand, please. The microphone will be handed to you. There's one over there. Uh, first of all, thank you for your presentation. I was very fascinated by your professional path, <laughs> and I would like to know how do you escape the rule of conventional psychiatry to the third generation therapies that in Portugal are most associated with the psycholo psychological? 
Also, I'd like to know your opinion about overprescribing posture or Portuguese psychiatrics and the fact that most of them doesn't even mention mindfulness, mostly the older generation. Thank you. Thank you for your question. For me, there is... I don't believe in that concept of, of classic psychiatry. Psych psychiatry is a field uh, and uh, it, it is a mental field and for me the aim of this field is to uh, is to try to help the individual to truly know himself and to be aware of what is happening in his or her mind. So, as I said in the beginning of my presentation, I don't believe that you can separate mind from the body. You need to address both. And even if in our country, um, when we are learning psychiatry, we don't learn psychotherapy at the same time, and unfortunately that's our reality. When you are with, with a patient, you need to be truly there. So you can learn a lot of things. You can uh, learn some skills and some psychotherapeutic uh, skills, but at the end, what will really help is your presence, is the, the, the attitude of really being there and listen truly the, the patient and you can't learn that they won't teach you this but it's the truth you just you you just need to be there for for the person and uh, this is uh, uh, this can be added to uh, a classical way of doing things if you want to to name it and uh, about your second question, well, it is true that 